It's really been that long, hasn't it? Ten whole years since I made my first YouTube channel. A lot has happened in that time. Growing up, changing interests, changing identities, graduating high school, college, becoming a game developer. Just... a lot of stuff. To celebrate this anniversary, I want to go through my history on the internet over the past 10 years, see how we got to where we are now, and what the future looks like. I have a big announcement at the end too, so look forward to that. But until then, sit back and enjoy me, Sarah, rambling about her decade on YouTube. And uh, in case you don't want to hear me ramble and just want to hear the announcements, you can skip to uh, this time on the screen right here. Otherwise, here we go! It started in September 2014. Well, technically it started before. I've always had an interest in making YouTube videos as a kid, and even made a couple channels in the early 2010s at the ages of, uh, 9 and 10. But my sister snitched on me, and those were deleted. Sometime around 2013, I started using the name Rhino again after I abandoned it as a little kid. I came up with it when I was 5 years old because my middle name looks really similar to the word Rhino. And I've been bad at names ever since. Since I unfortunately couldn't simply call myself Rhino on websites because it always got taken, I had to get creative and build a unique name for myself. And on that day, sometime in 2014, I was known as Rhino the Game Gal. It's Gal, you f- Funnily enough, I used that name on a few sites before using it on YouTube. In fact, in a really old video by the popular content creator Quackity, you can see a forum post scrolling by that was made by me before I created my channel. So, when it came time for me to try again at this YouTube thing, I decided to call it Rhino the Game Gal. Not a great name, but it also wasn't good either. Despite having zero clue what I wanted to do with the channel, I still had some kind of vision. An intro before every video, typical YouTuber stuff, but also using solid colors to denote different kinds of content. Even back then, when I first started, I used red to denote special announcements and purple to denote live streams. When the channel first started, I mostly just focused on two things that I really liked at the time, Nintendo and, uh, Toontown. <laughs> oh, and an offhand TF2 video, but that's not really important. It was mostly just various videos on Nintendo and Toontown. One series of videos is an unlisted three-episode Kirby Superstar playthrough that I did with a couple of my friends because I wanted to be like the Game Grumps. <laughs> That was actually the first time I used yellow to denote something, though it's the complete opposite of how I use it today. While today it signifies a serious project, like an animation or something, back then it signified a multiplayer game. Yeah, it's stupid, and it wasn't used outside of that uh, series ever again. The first thing that actually blew up a little was something called The Rewritten Story. It was a Toontown Machinima series where a silly little dog named Rhino has to save Toontown. This is the era where I made myself the protagonist because I was bad at making characters. The series used the Toontown rewritten prologue to build its story off of. Remember Slappy? Remember when he got killed and was then promptly forgotten about? What the hell is this building in Boss Bot HQ? It was a little poorly put together because I planned nothing out in advance. However, there are a few interesting concepts in there. Those include Slappy being forced to become a COG ally, the detective pig duo that both have terrible voice acting with a terrible British accent from yours truly. Oh my goodness, spectacular! And a magic sketchy cake that gives whoever eats it superpowers. I still like the design ideas for Super Tunes. I think the form had a unique name, but I don't remember. 14-year-old me is seething. Though, the series ended up getting canned because my parents didn't like that I was still into Toontown at that age, and made me stop playing it. Despite, uh, still letting me be a Nintendo dork. Weird priorities there. 
Keep in mind that at this point, they didn't know I had a YouTube channel. I had to be hush-hush about it, so I essentially had no choice. I stopped playing Toontown, and thus stopped making Toontown content. And then uh, four months later, I started secretly playing Toontown again with friends. But uh, by that point, I butchered up my PC and had to reinstall Windows. And for some fucking reason, I opted not to back up any data, thinking of it as a proper restart. Because of that, whatever I made of the rewritten story episode 5 is now lost media, except for this random flashback sequence in a shitty RPG maker game that was meant to coincide with the series that has a single shot from episode 5 in it! Tune in Mnesia is also lost media and will stay that way. Fuck you. Though, I do recall how the series would continue. At some point, Flippy would be brainwashed and be convinced to ban Rhino from Toontown if she loses a fight to him. Rhino loses and is banned. Then, months later, she randomly gets a device that can transport her to Toontown and circumvent the ban. Toontown by this point would have been dull looking and taken over by the cogs. I think the sketchy cake thing would have been used to a greater extent after this point, but I don't really remember. It's been 10 years, give me some slack. Something I should briefly mention is sometime after the rewritten story was cancelled, I made an RPG Maker game called The Completely Broken RPG, where some doofus guy goes on a multiversal adventure to stop a threat. Said threat in the game spreads some kind of evil disease in multiple worlds and makes its inhabitants evil? It was terrible and I replayed it on stream a few years ago. Despite how bad it is, it does have some funny moments that caught me off guard. I guess I can show you a few of these, like, right here. Oh, come on, Link. What? <laughs> Thief emerged. This cannot get any worse. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Let's get you two out of T. <laughs> No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Just thought I'd mention it because I get this odd feeling that the theme of multiversal adventure will come up again. Either way, the rewritten story was cancelled and after that point, the channel became focused on gameplay videos. Some of them were fun and interesting and some of them had, well, offensive humor. Yep, the 2015 to 2016 era of YouTube. I don't think anyone misses that time period, and the people that do are probably bigots. If I'm recalling correctly, 2015 wasn't that bad, but in hindsight was foreshadowing of what was to come. I can only be glad that I was both stupid and had some kind of moral compass, because I can guarantee you I would feel immense regret about becoming one of those dickweeds that dunked on SJWs. If you look through some of my playlists, you'll find that quite a bit of videos from back then are either unlisted, privated, or just missing. That's because I was a very stupid teenager slash young adult who thought offensive humor was cool. This is especially considering that kind of humor was popular at the time, and some of my friends back then were into it too. I actually got a community strike recently because a YouTube bot picked up on one of those videos. So if you're wondering why Rhino's Return to Toontown only has like five videos in it, even though it goes up to the number eight, that's why. I especially regret making the earlier Rhino's Return to Toontown videos because the content is just so offensive that I'm shocked I allowed myself to post them at all. I'm sure I don't have to point this out because, well, the graphics on screen, but I ended up deleting a bunch of them during editing because I didn't realize how horrifically bad they were. Like, I can't believe I gaslit myself into thinking that I edited out all the bad stuff because, uh, if you didn't catch the, uh, in that one, uh, sped up footage from, uh, back there, uh, I had to censor a lot of the names because there was some really gross stuff in it. 
I might review later ones too, just in case, but I'd be shocked if anything that I made past like age 17 is that bad. Back on topic, um, I was making a lot of gaming content back then, as I mentioned earlier. During that time period, I felt like I backed myself into a corner with my gaming content. I wanted to make more serious animations and write stories again, but I felt like it'd flop on my channel. It was growing at a slow rate, but I felt like deviating too hard or having too much content diversity on the channel would kill it. Back then, there was a lot of talk about how a YouTube channel should be, so it really intimidated me. Plus, I was really getting into this uh, little indie game called Undertale at the time, along with its fan content. Uh, stuff like Dreamer Reborn, uh, early Underfell comics, very early Gaster stuff that people could only headcanon about, this Gaster fight in particular being one that I really liked. So, I decided to make a second channel. I called it Rhino Productions. It's not really a creative name, but it did the job splitting the channel into two. I had wanted Rhino Productions to give off a more professional vibe, which I would lean into a little more in later branding. In fact, the rainbow vibe that this channel has originated from when I was doing the pixel style for Rhino Productions. The first thing that I did with the channel was start the Otherworlder series. It began as a silly little what if video games acted up kind of thing before ballooning in my mind into this multimedia, multi series universe involving multiversal adventures. It didn't get very far and was way too ambitious for a teenage Sarah, but by God did I try! <laughs> At some point, GG Underfell and the rewritten story got enveloped into it, with the rewritten story in particular becoming a prequel to the Otherworlder. Anyway, the first episode was my very first animated gameplay video, and it is garbage and full of stolen ideas. But it did moderately well, getting around 500 views after a month. I think an Instagram account back then promoted it. Nowadays, that's like really garbage view numbers, but back then, whenever I was getting a lot less views on average, that was really interesting to me, which motivated me to keep going. Then I decided to make an Underfell animation. So, here's how this series came to be. I think I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. During this time period of getting super into Undertale, I came across a few takes of this popular AU known as Underfell. There were specifically some webcomic dubs that grabbed my attention. And one thing I didn't really like was how overtly mean it was. I know that the concept came to be because Vic Underfella wanted to make the Undertale cast look more like villains, but the characters just came off wrong. Like, why is Toriel being mean to this child? Why is everything just red and black? I think I just didn't like that it was like the edgy AU, which... Really? You don't like the villain AU for being edgy? Nowadays, I can just leave someone be if they make a take on something that I don't like. But back then, stupid 15-year-old me wanted to make a version of Underfell that was more like Undertale, where the characters can become good again. In hindsight, I may have gone a little too far with making the world Undertale-like, while also uh, making it too gross and horror-like. Like, uh, you know, everything involving Toriel eating humans and the unnecessary gore in Episode 3. Also, people aren't really a fan of how I do Sans. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I can do a new take on Underfell one day, but uh, not today. Regardless, I worked on the first episode off and on during the first half of 2016, and released it that June. I even promoted it on Rhino the Game Gal. It didn't do very well at first, I think it had less of an immediate impact than the first Otherworlder video. But then it started gaining traction. Soon I had a video with thousands of views, and my channel was gaining hundreds of subscribers. This was the biggest success I had at this point. I NEEDED to make another episode. After a month of doing this really terrible, grindy animation process, I had an episode 2 ready. That one really pushed my channel forward. 
Suddenly, I had nearly a million views overall and 15,000 subscribers on a YouTube channel that was only around six months old. This was when my family found out about the channel. My siblings saw that I was logged into it on my laptop, which, um... Why were they fucking snooping around on my laptop? And my sister was about to snitch on me again, but was impressed by the views it was getting, so she spared me. Uh, thanks? It didn't even matter because my parents found out anyway, and to my surprise, they were supportive of the channel. They even helped me enable monetization. Yeah, I didn't make anything off my videos until that point. Uh, the consequences of keeping things on the down low, I guess. <laughs> I made the second Otherworlder episode a few months later, but a lot of my focus was on Rhino the Game Gal at the time, as well as trying to build a community with Rhino Productions, uh, both of which weren't really working out. Like, sure, my old channel got a slight boost from being connected to the new one, but not enough to feel like I was incentivized to keep doing what I liked at the time. So, despite choosing to make them separate, I said, fuck it, merge them together again. <laughs> All right, what the hell does Rhino GG mean anyway? The short answer is Rhino Game Gal. <laughs> it's literally the name of the old channel, except cooler. The long answer is it came from a website domain name idea that my friend Relic pitched in late 2016 when I wanted to make a website for both channels. I already had one for Rhino Productions, but I wanted one for both. It was rhinogg.com versus a bunch of loser ideas pitched by me. And rhinogg, the actual good choice, won out. So I just repurposed the domain name for merging both channels together. It should be pretty evident, but I opted to rebrand Rhino Productions into Rhino GG, and then abandon Rhino the Game Gal, posting new content that would go to that channel on this one. I was still worried about possibly nuking my channel at the time, so I introduced a color scheme system for thumbnails and intros to denote what video was what, something that kind of still persists to this day. The easiest explanation is on thumbnails. Uh, blue corner indicates a Rhino the Game Gal video, and yellow represents Rhino Productions. Red and purple were repurposed from the old channel for announcements and live streams, respectively. Green would later be introduced to indicate that the video is related to a game I made. That's why all the Delta Traveler videos have a green corner on the thumbnail. So, that was it then. The channels were now one. The next two videos were an animation and a gameplay video, a very standard thing to expect from this. Nothing wrong could happen, right? Oh. In April 2017, I put out this really awesome, not at all ill-guided announcement that cancelled the GG Underfell series. To say I was bitchy in this video would not be lying. It's basically a 10 minute long rant about how I felt about Undertale Fanon and AUs at the time, which was not positive. I was very hypercritical over the existence of a lot of AUs, and how a lot of them revolve around or only involve Sans. I then made a bad faith claim that people call him Sans Undertale because of the oversaturation of AUs, uh, which is very silly in retrospect. Like, no, that's just a silly meme name. Then, GG Underfell was cancelled. I claimed it was because I wasn't interested in Undertale anymore, but that's a little silly. In mid-2018, I regained my Undertale brain rot and have kept it ever since, so that doesn't seem right. It probably had to do with the era this was in. At this point, this was 2017. It was the middle of the laughingstock era for Undertale. People were not kind to Undertale during that time period, and I was really influenced by that air. I was 16 when this video was made, and this was after I was exposed to some of the stupid YouTube drama crap of late 2016, early 2017. It was not okay to be cringe, 
And that was the mindset I had when making that video. For very obvious reasons, the video was unlisted in 2018. Especially considering that I had uh, restarted the Underfell series by that point. But I'll get to that in a little bit. I'm pretty sure I was just a cynical asshole back then too, because I also made a Toontown rant not long after. Wow, this time period is toxic, isn't it? Well, after having my dramatic breakup with Undertale, I got back into Toontown! With my newfound really cool hyperfixation, I made a couple Toontown animations using some nifty programming knowledge I picked up on in school early that year. I also followed a couple guides made by uh, someone who later became my friend. Say, I think I'm getting goosebumps uh, hearing about all this Toontown talk. Uh, uh, what's next anyway? Oh, God damn it! I have a complicated relationship with this game. On one hand, it introduced me to people that I'm still friends with to this day, and taught me valuable skills involving game development and teamwork. Though at the same time, its litany of controversy, the bad people associated with it, and hindsight have really tainted my view on the project as a whole. I surely didn't know that you could have a parasocial relationship with the creative lead of a project you worked on. For those that aren't aware, and I'm sure you aren't, Toontown Offline was a Toontown fan game that prioritizes single player and local play over the MMO nature of the original despite keeping those gameplay elements intact. Nowadays, the game exists as another project called Toontown Realms, which is a lot more focused on being a sandbox game. A Gary's mod for Toontown, if you will. Despite being built off of Offline, it's handled by a completely different set of people and should not be considered the same game. Though, uh, it is fun seeing features that I developed still in the game after all this time. Toontown Offline first got its start in 2014, and I was hooked the moment I saw it. I followed it everywhere. To the Toontown Offline forums in 2015, to the Discord server in 2016, and ended up joining the team in mid-2017 as a programmer. Like I mentioned earlier, I learned some programming knowledge from school and used it to try to experiment with Toontown's game engine to make animations. I would further push myself into adding features to a Toontown Online codebase. This knowledge would be used in a rewritten story reboot that also went nowhere. Not because I didn't want to, but because this was the point where I had too much going on. Working on Toontown Offline, making other videos, being in the latter half of high school, just a lot of aspirations at that time period, and being unable to tend to all of them because I'm just one person. That being said, the reboot is still impressive. The original series used gameplay footage of me controlling multiple tunes at the same time. It was clunky and probably contributed to the deterioration of my laptop at the time. The reboot used a cutscene system I made to make animations within the Toontown game engine itself. It served more of a purpose outside of the rewritten story too, though it was mostly used for Toontown Offline stuff. Take a look at this old scene that never got added to Offline. It's actually a recreation of a scene from the release trailer of the original Toontown Online, but now in higher quality, all in engine too. I'm still pretty proud of it. There's a, uh, a lot that I want to talk about regarding Toontown Offline, but I need to move on before this just becomes an offline rant. Oh, I also made a Doki Doki Literature Club animation that took seven months to make that sucks so much ass that I unlisted it, but we don't need to talk about that. Evidently, younger me also wanted to do more than just Toontown junk, because during that time period, I realized something. GG Underfell sucked ass. The way that I made it, the content in it, it was quite literally just edited Undertale footage. I also stopped being such a piss-ass over Undertale. So I thought, why not just make it better? Funnily enough, I actually started on episode three before the series was canceled. But in mid-2018, not long after I finished that terrible DDLC animation, I regained the will to work on Underfell again. Did you know that in the first two episodes, I animated the footage in fucking Sony Vegas so I could superimpose new content onto Undertale footage? It was so 
so tedious to do, and that shit was not gonna fly anymore. I started animating the overworld segments in Flash like I did with the battles, and by god did it make things a lot easier. I don't do manual animation for this series anymore, but back then, it made it so I could grind out an episode in a month with more interesting details and movement. Obviously, it didn't fix the release schedule issue, but hey, I could make episodes if I wanted to and not immediately burn out. Skipping past a new Otherworld episode, I made another Underfell video, this time a bonus episode that I also took down. Partially because it involved Toontown Offline team members, and partially because there was also some offensive humor in it. Yeah, this team was not a good influence on 18-year-old me. Though, uh, I did reuse some stuff from it for, uh, the Delta Traveler fight. So, I soon started on a second bonus video, but I didn't really have any ideas for it, so it turned into an Undertale Cross Deltarune animation. Deltarune was very new at the time, and I was trying to think of ways to integrate elements of each into each other. At the same time, I also wanted to make something stupid and edgy. First idea was an otherworlder ARG type thing. Nope. Then I gave it some more thought and made an edgy looking logo. Weird process, I know. And then wrote the monologue between the devil and his minion about Kara. I then stapled this to the end of the Undertale Deltarune video I was working on, and uh, that became... Now, before you say it, yes, there is a big boob lady, but also this game is notable because it was actually the first video game I made by myself that actually works. I tried making two very different Mario and Luigi fan games in Unity in mid-2018, but they both went absolutely nowhere. But now that I had some experience by the end of that year, I started taking things seriously and put in the effort to make an accurate looking Undertale fan game in Unity. The game takes place after the soulless pacifist route in Undertale. Adult Frisk, controlled by Kara, gets killed and goes to hell. The player regains control at this point. The big boss of hell, Lucifer, allows you to explore different parts of hell and kinda just lets you do what you want to the sinners. You can destroy them, steal their souls, or spare them. I think the only positive I can really give is that it was one of the most accurate looking Undertale fan games of its time. Most of what was out in early 2019 looked kinda janky, which includes the Undertale Yellow demo weirdly enough. Though the finished game still has some issues I'm a little peeved by. For my Undertale animations, I had studied how the game moved in gameplay footage, and even wrote a document of common stuff I noticed, like move speeds and stuff. So it was super nice being able to use that knowledge to make a game that really looks the part. At the same time though, it's pretty bad. It really boils down to two things. The ambition and the tone. Each enemy was going to be their own individual character and essentially act as a mini-boss, and none of them would have an act path. You'd only be able to spare them by revealing their soul. The problem is making enough characters with their own unique issues and ways they get solved, all without acting. It's a bit difficult for me to make characters as is, and this was my first attempt at a game by myself. So this unique challenge ended up being too much for me to handle. Also, the tone was not appropriate for an Undertale fan game at all. I wanted to try to achieve an adult theme, but it came off as so fucking tryhard. It is so, so embarrassing. It was genuinely so painful to replay this game after so many years. Like, it's just so bad. <laughs> This is why I chose to unlist Atonement and not the completely broken RPG. At least the latter doesn't have a big booby lady that wants to fuck you. Though uh, I ended up relisting Atonement uh, not too long ago uh, while uh, making this video. So you can see how embarrassing it is. Oh, and you could choose Kara's gender in this game. It's weird because I knew what non-binary people were when making the game. Uh, but I still 
bought into the whole gender neutral means up for interpretation thing, that isn't even true. I mean, could you really blame me? This is the same time period where the, uh, the Chris is really just Kara post Undertale Geno theory was still very popular. Oh shit, the kid is Kara! He's Kara! Oh shit! After some up and down development over the course of around two years, I tried rebooting the game at the beginning of 2021. I had an idea for a linear adventure from the spawn point to the end with a more traditional Undertale series enemy system before just scrapping the game altogether. The Friskin Hell game just wasn't interesting to me anymore. Meanwhile, back to 2019, Toontown Offline imploded on itself because of... Wait for it. TRANSPHOBIA! One of the developers was being insensitive to a few people on the team that came out as trans, and the creative lead defended said developer. Team members quit or threatened to quit. The project lead had a mental breakdown and canceled the project due to overt stress. And a project takeover happened that left a lot of people with a bad taste in their mouths. This includes me, I quit and did not let that shit go for a while, and did some really petty things that I regret doing. I kinda wanna talk about it at some point, but there is a... a lot of bad stuff that happened. Uh, not just relationships between team members, but also just some really petty things against other projects as well. And I might bring up another one of those later. Say, actually, um, back on topic. Uh, I've been talking about gender identity a lot as of reaching 2019, which I'm now realizing is the midpoint of this decade of YouTube. Hmm, I wonder where this is going. So, around April or May of 2019, uh, sometime after quitting Toontown Offline and nearing the end of my senior year of high school, I downloaded the new Xbox Avatar Creator. I thought it'd be fun to create a new character on there. My first thought, when it opened in front of me, was, I can't wait to make a cute girl to represent myself! This kinda shocked me. You've probably caught on already, but... At this point in time, I was not a girl. I did not call my old channel Rhino the Game Gal. That channel had a guy in the name, and the 18-year-old sitting in front of the computer screen did not call himself Sarah. No, that kid was someone who didn't really know who he was, nor did he consider defining anything about himself. He was who people thought he was, and not much else. He rarely drew himself, and when he did, it was either his tune or a blank avatar with no discernible details. He didn't draw his self-portraits with a smile, and, uh, really, all he knew himself as was Rhino. I remember trying to make what I thought I should have made in that avatar editor, which was basically a stock version of my real self at that time. And I remember feeling really mad and frustrated. Why did I hate making myself as an avatar? Why did I feel so conflicted on who I should be? Why am I questioning things about myself through the stupid-ass Xbox Avatar Editor? I gave it some thought, and hints appeared everywhere. I had thoughts about how neat it'd be if I was a girl as early as 13 years old, and throughout 2018 and 2019, I had almost exclusively been drawing female characters and creating female avatars for games like Toontown and Minecraft. If you knew me back then, you might remember I kept setting my Discord profile to different art of Sayori from DDLC. There's this one old OC of mine that I kept drawing, and it's kind of surprising how many elements of her appear in my current day avatar. Though, it's not really shocking. I would say that I'm surprised that I didn't question my gender before this point, but really, I'm not. I wasn't exposed to many genderqueer people until I reached adult age. I feel like the whole Toontown Offline thing is what helped push me to discover who I am. Partly because the implosion involved gender identity, and partly because, uh, some of those other team members were bigoted. I had mentioned one time that I might be pansexual, 
and then a high-ranking team member kept making rude jokes about it for months. I don't think me questioning my gender at that time would have gone over well. Regardless, Pandora's box was essentially open at this point, and I really had no other choice than to truly explore myself. What ended up happening was that I liked being feminine and being addressed as a girl, and that has only grown stronger over the past five years. That young adult named Rhino, who didn't know who he was, decided what she wanted to be was this wacky girl named Sarah. At some point before the end of the school year, I came out to my mom. Despite the fact that she's told me multiple times that she'd be fine if I was gay, I was really worried that she would uh, disown me and throw me out of the car. But no, she was accepting and has been supportive ever since. I feel really lucky, considering that I know plenty of people who have had that gone poorly. At this point, I've socially transitioned in almost every facet of my life, and I'm pretty happy where I am right now. Though, I do want to go further when I start making more money. This is very much an identity I want to work on, and I will keep going down this road for the foreseeable future. Wait, this is a video about a YouTube channel. So I did a big rebrand. In addition to having a version of myself that is actually defined and represents me, I also wanted to have a channel that looked a lot more unique and less video game focused. And hey, it's worked so well that I've kept this logo shape ever since 2019, even if the vibe of it has changed a few times since then. Also, this radial rainbow is so much better than the strip I went with for the three year long pixel era. It just looks better and is also gender affirming too. Despite that though, things were still business as usual. I made a few gameplay videos, an Underfell episode, and kept working on Atonement. All while being in college and having a part-time job. Should it be surprising that I didn't have a job until mid-2019? I was doing pretty well. And then I got really depressed. Lockdown did not do me well. It's not because I was stuck inside a lot more. I don't really go out a lot anyways. Hell, I got two videos out during lockdown before things really hit me. Most of the inactivity from the beginning of 2020 was just school, work, and atonement. The inactivity after the Gmod video was when I was depressed. There were a lot of bad things happening in the outside world at that time. COVID deaths kept getting worse, and plenty of places were just lifting restrictions in spite of the danger to people that were vulnerable. Alongside that, some people were just losing their fucking minds. People were berating, attacking, and assaulting service workers for doing their jobs. And also the whole trans panic shit kicked into overdrive and is something that persists to this day. Guess who was a trans service worker? I think that terrible air really messed me up in ways that I didn't know until a couple years later. My sleep schedule is terrible throughout 2020. I would often wake up 30 minutes before a night shift. Fall 2020 semester, I dropped one of my classes because I was gonna fail it. And then I actually failed it the next semester. I was recklessly spending money because I thought I deserved something nice due to all the constant negativity. I had some really dark thoughts during that time too. It was bad. Though, for some reason, it also sparked something within me. I remember that summer, I started to date someone I was friends with, and I started getting into the music she listens to. One song that she recommended kind of stuck with me, and that song is Panic at the Disco's King of the Clouds. I listened to it again right before writing this bit. I don't listen to that music anymore, so it's been a long time since I've heard it. But it brought back some feelings. I feel like it hit me so hard back then because I felt like I wasn't doing or creating anything meaningful. Back then, it didn't really matter because I was just making silly things for fun. Hell, even when I tried making something interesting, like with Atonement, it was pretty bad. Listening to this song again, nearly four years after I heard it for the first time, it evoked that same feeling. 
this urge to make something that I truly believe to be special. Not for anyone else's enjoyment, but because I truly believe it to be special. I think this feeling helps to completely change how I make things. There's a distinct change in the vibe of my content before 2020 and after 2020. The very next episode of GG Underfell that next year is so different compared to the past episodes. Delta Traveler has a more personal, in-depth story compared to GG Underfell or Atonement. I would honestly say this drive to create truly flared during this time, and I think this song really sparked that flame. It was enough for me to do another complete rebrand, the one that has persisted to this day. I felt like I wanted to take myself more seriously and be more artistic in what I create. I wanted to feel more in control of who I was. These radical changes to who I publicly showed myself as have shaped who I am today, even if quite a few aspects of it aren't true anymore. Evidently, though, it really wasn't enough for me to do much aside from... art. I didn't make a single video for the rest of 2020. I tried to make some other videos, but I kinda just gave up on them. Eventually, I got the energy to attempt a rebooting Atonement and tried improving myself in 2021. I actually put out videos for one, and I tried making a new game called Uno Tale, my first online game. I didn't intend to publish it publicly, but I did it at the last minute. I had thought of and tried a few other Undertale fan projects, most of which didn't get past the idea stage. The only one I made any progress on was a Sans fanfight called Undertale Skeletal Vengeance. Got to phase 2 before stopping and eventually cancelling the project. Oh, side note, I also quietly rejoined the Toontown Offline team in late 2020 as a 3D animator. I thought that by that point, the team would have matured a bit and we would have been less mean to each other. Would you believe me if another incident happened in 2021 that caused half the team to leave again, including me? And that it was caused by the exact same people that did the last one? I actually wrote about it on a separate website that I have called tutao.com, and I only stopped writing about it because things were getting, uh, way too fucking serious. Back to Undertale! I think 2021 was when I was really, really into the Undertale series again with how many Undertale things I was doing at that time. And then Deltarune Chapter 2 released, fueling it even further. And then a meme started happening on Twitter. Where Chris and Susie were being put in places they shouldn't be in. You know where this is going. The original idea was that it was just going to be Chris and Susie in the Undertale Ruins. It'd be a fun contribution to the meme, where it's a game rather than a funny image. I had a few ideas for how I could take this further, like Noelle tagging along as the healer, and even a few other world ideas that I could possibly do. I copied the system that was used for Undertale Skeletal Vengeance, which was also the same system used for Atonement, and got to work. After about a week, I had a tiny bit of game made and came up with a name for it, Delta Traveler. I posted a work-in-progress video of the first cutscene of the game, thinking people would just think that it's neat and move on. People really liked it, with well, some people really hoping it was an actual game. One person even messaged me a battle theme based on the video, which eventually became the game's battle theme. My Twitter account went from around 300 followers to like a thousand in the span of a couple days. I had something special here. I spent the next month grinding out the first version of the game, containing the ruins, as well as a teaser for the next part of the game, Earthbound. It was released in November 2021, and a lot of people played it, including popular people! Shay played it, Sybils played it, it was being talked about in various Undertale communities. I had friends messaging me about how people they knew were playing the game, including people I knew from high school. I had to keep this going. I very quickly got to work on Section 2, got a team together in March 2022 because I didn't have a team until then, 
and version 2 was released in June. We made a few prototypes of future sections for that year's under event because we wanted to show something really cool. Did you know that we were invited to both under event 2022 and 2023? Usually you have to submit your project to that, so that was a really high honor. <laughs> Then I spent like a year of my life grinding out Section 3 because what we released so far just wasn't enough to satisfy me. It releases December 2023 to a generally positive, kinda mixed reception, but my friends like it, so whatever. Now, it's considered one of the best Undertale fan games up there with Undertale Yellow and TS Underswap. Honestly, it's kinda hard to believe. In a lot of ways, I'm very grateful that I somehow stumbled into this. I got to build a game that is really cool and special. I became friends with people that I otherwise would have never met, like Shay. I've gained the respect of really cool creators in the community. One of the most humbling comments I've gotten is that Section 2 got people to play Earthbound for the very first time. It's really gratifying. It's also one of the only projects I actually planned out a little bit before starting. Before the first version was released, I had already planned out the general plot and story structure, how the game would play in certain parts, which parts of the game I would emulate in the original style, etc. That being said, I've still been adding crucial plot points as time goes on, but hey, it's better than GG Underfell at least, where it got retconned into the Otherworlder, and then retconned back out. <laughs> Also, this part is off script, but it also fulfills a childhood dream of mine, because I've always wanted to make a video game. And to have the opportunity to actually make one that people really like is honestly... <laughs> it's honestly a dream come true. That being said, this whole Delta Traveler thing hasn't been without its downsides. I think I've put an unhealthy amount of effort into the game for two years straight. Because of that, a lot of my other passions have gone to the wayside. I haven't really made videos since Delta Traveler took off. My schoolwork suffered because of it too. Now to be fair, I did graduate college, though I probably would have had a higher GPA if Delta Traveler had fizzled out instead of blew up like it did. Also, it's a little more difficult for me to take criticism against Delta Traveler compared to my other projects. I think I poured so much of my heart into it that anything mean said towards the game kinda hurts, especially in regards to Section 3. I worked so much harder on that one than I did the first two, and it took longer than both of them combined. I don't really want to complain about this because I feel selfish doing so, but I'd be lying if some of it didn't make me regret making the game. I also feel bad accrediting this game to me specifically. Despite doing a majority of the programming and being the main writer, I feel like there are people on the team that are more talented and skilled than me that deserve more credit than I do. I mean, I don't know, it feels like I don't deserve this game being as popular as it is. It's a silly fanfic about Undertale characters going to games I like. I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks this, and I feel like there are people that are mean towards me because of it. Like, I never asked for this, and being cynical helps no one. Though, with all that said, I still intend to keep Delta Traveler going until either it's done or I can't anymore. But I should probably take it slower from now on. I have other ambitions, responsibilities, I've gotten a new job that's probably gonna kickstart a new career for me, unless something else happens. I can't just be the Delta Traveler girl my whole life. I may end up bringing more people on to help keep Delta Traveler on track, but we'll see. In any case, please be patient. There's so much I want to do, and I can only do so much at a time. Well, that's all that's happened so far. Ten years after scraggly 14-year-old me decided to push yourself, I'm sitting here with a YouTube channel with 64,000 subscribers and an Undertale fan game that a lot of people seem to enjoy. So, what's next? Well, I don't intend on stopping anytime soon, so I'll keep pushing myself to create more things. 
I want to start focusing more on this channel. I've had a few video ideas bubbling in my brain hole for a while, and me putting so much of my time into other things like my job and Delta Traveler has made that very not possible. Just to rattle off a few things, I want to get back into making gameplay videos, I want to make more animations that aren't just underfell, I want to make video essays on things I've thought about for a while, and some of these I've tried to get back into over the past few years, but I've tended to lose motivation or interest, or Delta Traveler just lures me back into itself. It's like a relapse or something. <laughs> I also want to explore more options in game development. There's this Mario Bros. remake I've had on the back burner that I should really finish up. One of the modes is completed, and the other has a little bit of progress done on it. I also want to remake Uno Tail at some point too. The current version is buggy and lacking in features and quality of life improvements, and the current connection model is not intuitive for the type of people that would play the game. I'm not sure if I'd be able to do something about that last part because that would require spending money, but, you know, we'll see. There's this Undertale horror game idea that I've been thinking about trying. There's also a few indie concepts I want to do at some point. I really want to try to make an original game someday that isn't just a fan game. There is a lot that I want to do, but the only issue is that I'm a single human with responsibilities to take care of. It's probably why I've been trying to get help with a lot of the stuff I'm doing, especially the fan games. Hell, I've been going off and on working on an Undertale Yellow fan animation that I should really release a teaser for. As it stands, I have a job outside of here that I focus most of my energy on. Two as of recording this. I feel that if this YouTube thing was my full-time gig, I'd be able to focus a lot more on this and my other passions. If you like the stuff that I do and want to see more of it, I'd implore you to help support this channel either through Patreon or becoming a channel member. You get your name at the end of videos, you can see videos early before they release, you get access to an exclusive text channel in my Discord server, all for at least one US dollar a month. Disclaimer, some videos like announcements and game trailers are exempt from this. Shout out to all these people that have been supporting the channel as of releasing this video. They are very gracious and lovely. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for watching, and until next... No. No. This isn't right. There's been something on my mind for a while, which has been bubbling up more and more for the past couple years. I do not identify with the name Rhino anymore. And it isn't just because of my transition either. I still called my avatar character Rhino for a year or two after starting. But at a certain point, I feel like I've outgrown that name. It's come to represent a version of me from a time long past. It's to a point where it's uncomfortable when people call me Rhino. For a while, I've been taking Rhino out of the names I use online, treating Rhino GG as a brand name of sorts. But now, I think it's time to just do a full rebrand. Starting today, this channel and everything associated with it will cease to be known as Rhino GG. I've thought about what could replace it for a while, since, you know, I'm bad at names. And I wanted something that can stand out on its own. But after deliberating with friends on potential ideas and designs, I think I've come up with a suitable replacement. Presenting... For anyone that's been following me for any number of years, this might make some sense. For those that haven't, I've been identifying with bunny characters for a while. It started on Toontown Offline, funnily enough, and slowly evolved more and more until I had basically a fursona. Let it be known that Toontown is a furry game that turns people into furries! Basic logic is that applying bunny to the name makes it more personal to me. The violet part is another thing though. There are two primary reasons for the name. First is I like the name Violet, and the other is I've been really into the color purple recently. Honestly, if I were to change my middle name, it'd probably be Violet. 
For the visuals, I sketched out some stuff and got some input from friends, and came out with a logo and two icons. Gonna go ahead and generalize some stuff here since the details really aren't that important, but uh... In short, I wanted to have a bunny head to fit with the whole bunny thing I'm going with. My friend Chloe came up with this initials icon akin to the R icon from Rhino GG. And I had this idea for a bunny head with X eyes, so those combined into this cute bunny head with the V from the logo acting as hair. As evident from the background, I decided to continue what I've been doing with Rhino GG, having a spacey background with sketchy looking edges. Though this time, I added rainbow stripes to the edges, so I could keep the rainbow aesthetic going. I thought about whether I should change my avatar design, and, well, no, I won't. But I thought it'd be neat to have a mascot of sorts. I figured making something based on the icon would work well, so I did. This is Vi, pronounced Vi. Like Dodge. She's a silly gremlin bunny that likes to cause mischief. A few of my friends helped with the design a bit, like suggesting she have a sweater and some of the color choices. I like how I incorporated a little bit of the branding into her clothing design with her black sock having a rainbow stripe on it. Whether I'll use her in any meaningful fashion has yet to be seen, but as it stands, she's a really neat character that I'm proud of making, even if I didn't make her by myself. I don't think I'm that good at making character designs, so it's nice to have something that I'm actually proud of. I've been putting a lot of effort into the rebrand, and uh, this video counts as part of the rebrand. I've been working on it for two months now. This is the fourth voice recording session I've done for this video. This is the most effort I put into a single video. Correction, technically the DDLC animation took longer to come out and took more effort, but that was really bad, but this is really cool. So, uh, get trolled younger me. And it doesn't end here because I'll continue to put a lot of effort into it as I continue updating my socials and other websites. But ultimately, I think it'll be worth it. And being behind a screen name that fits me again will be a nice feeling. Violet Bunny is here to stay. So what does that mean for everything else? Well, my release schedule isn't changing, at least not yet, and my series aren't going to change that much either. The only thing series-wise that's changing is the name of my Underfell series. I've been calling it GG Underfell a lot outside of this channel, and I think I'll just officially call it GG Underfell from now on. It's such an old take on Underfell that it's worth just labeling it as a product of that era. If I were to ever start over from scratch, I'd probably call it VB Underfell or something. We'll see though. I think one thing I might change is the color labeling system. And by change, I mean stop doing it. At this point, I'm fine having a big variety of series and types of content on this channel. The thumbnail labels are kind of just redundant now. I may end up changing some of the old thumbnails too, especially anything regarding Underfell or the Delta Traveler OSD. Also, I don't imagine it helped distinguish video types for colorblind people. That system was a terrible idea. One thing I'm definitely doing is remaking the Discord server. The Rhino GG one is like 8 years old and it's just a mess. And I feel like it'd take more effort to fix all those issues than to just make a new one. So I made a new one! It's much more refined compared to the original one in my opinion and is more well-equipped to deal with iffy situations. I haven't been the best at managing Discord servers, considering I tend to be very impatient, but I hope it goes well. <laughs> and uh, Twitch, I should probably update the emotes and also update the, uh, the prefix, um, if I even can. <laughs> oh, and all my other channels that I still use are gonna change names too. Here's a handy visual! With all that being said, I just want to thank everyone that has ever watched me, supported me, played the games I made, and really just enjoyed me or my stuff. It's really motivating seeing people like the silly stuff that I make or do, and I want to keep putting more out into the world. Making people happy, entertaining them, seeing people respond to what I put out. That's what I feel is my purpose in this world. Here's to many more years to come. Bye-bye. Oh, I should probably recommend videos. Um, uh, here.
I don't have an outro thing made yet, but uh, next real video, there will be. So, uh, yeah, I'll be busy. All right. Bye-bye.